Hi there, welcome to Ocean Hills Online Church, where you can come as you are, wherever you are. We're so glad you came today to join us. I'm Jono, I'm one of the pastors at Ocean Hills, and we are in week six of Shelter at Home, and what a crazy time, and we really hope that this time today is a time where you could experience the real and deep love that God has for you. So we're so glad that you tuned in today. We have a new series we're starting today called Four, and it's not the number four, but it's what is Jesus for, really? And it's so often we hear about what the church is against, but what is the church really for? And so in these, this next series, we're going to be looking at stories of Jesus to understand what he is for. And John has a great message for us today down at the Rainbow Arch. It's going to be awesome to, to just listen in and, he, and, and hear what God has for us. This is supposed to be an interactive time. So we want you to say hi. We want you to ask for live prayer. Our staff uh, misses all of you. We're online right now. Our staff is, is online live, and we'd love to chat with you and pray for you and encourage you today. So take advantage of that. Interact with us. This is also such an important time to get connected and to stay connected. So if you are connected, we would love to get you into one of our online groups. You can just hit that button that says Life Groups up there to find out more information. But uh, sign up for a Life Group. We wanna get you into a community in this time where we, need, we all need support and encouragement from one another. So get connected. Thanks for being with us today. We are uh, gonna spend our time just uh, engaging in worship and listening to God's word. And so we hope that you're encouraged and inspired today. Uh, let's send it over to the Yardleys as they lead us. Well, good morning, Ocean Hills family. We want to start us off with a song that we taught you on Easter. It's been running through our household and our hearts so much. Hope it's been doing the same for you. So let's get up off your couches, raise your voices. Let's worship together. I search the world. It couldn't fill. Praise and treasures the pain are never enough. Then you came along, and put me back together. Now every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's Better 
than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you jesus we know it's true when they had finished eating jesus said to simon peter simon son of john Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. What's up, Ocean Hills family? Good morning. All those of you that are tuning in here in Santa Barbara, but all over the place now, that we are experiencing online church together. That passage that you just heard might have sounded familiar to uh, many of you that were tuned in last week on Easter Sunday. John chapter 21, it's one of the post resurrection appearances of Jesus. And and last week I talked about Jesus wanting to take Peter's heart of a fisherman and turn it into the heart of a shepherd. But as I've been studying this passage and and pressing deeper, there's just so much treasure that I wanted us to to go deeper into the passage this morning. And uh, here's the phrase I want you to think about when you study scripture. This isn't part of my sermon, it's just a sidebar and it's simply this. Notice what you notice. Notice what you notice. Whenever you read scripture, what jumps out at you? What word, what phrase, what verse, what insight, what reflection? How's the Spirit of God uh, impressing the Word of God in you? What's the word for you? And this week I have three reflections uh, that I noticed this week. And uh, the first one is notice that Jesus called Peter by his old name three times. I don't know if you noticed that, but I noticed that this week. When, when Peter and uh, Jesus meet each other, Peter's name is Simon, son of John. And in John chapter 1, verse 42, we read that Simon's brother and Andrew brought Simon to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and he said, you are Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. Why a name change? What's the meaning of this? Why is Jesus changing his name? And then why three times is he coming back and saying, Simon, son of John? Well, in the Bible, God changed someone's name to to call them up, not to call them out, to call them up, to lean into and live into their full potential, to lean into and live out God's mission and purpose for their life. And this is exactly what Jesus is doing with Simon right here in this passage in John chapter 1. What's so interesting though is between John 1 and John 21, Simon son of John is always called Peter. And now chapter 21, Jesus has been crucified, dead and buried. Now he's risen from the dead after Peter's denied him three times, remember, and now he shows up in Peter's life and he calls him by his own name his old name, the old name, Simon, son of John. What's happening here? I believe, you know, Peter said three times, I don't even know the man. Hey, weren't you with that? I don't even know the man. It's kind of interesting, but I think what's happening here is Jesus is reintroducing himself to Peter. He's, Peter, you remember me? Peter, you're one of my best friends. Peter, all that we went through together, really? You're saying, I don't know the man? Peter, I love you. Peter, I'm for you. Peter, I got a purpose and a mission for your life. I have a bigger and better story for you. And I want to know, do you love me? Are you with me? He's not giving up on Peter. He's calling him up. He's not calling him out. He's saying, Peter, you've gone back to your old self, your old life, back to fishing. 
But I haven't given up on you. You've given up on yourself. I want you to know I haven't given up on you. I know who you are. I know you're Simon, son of John, but I have a future for you still. But I need to know, are you with me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And I wonder this morning if there's somebody who needs to be reintroduced to Jesus. Maybe you went to camp, Young Life, uh, summer camp, Hume Lake. You raised your hand. You gave your life to Christ. And then you went to college, partied your brains out, drifted away from God, ended up kind of getting into your career. You got married and you just kind of wandered and drifted away a long time ago. And you go, I, I need to be reintroduced to Jesus. I'm ready to come home and be reintroduced, to discover my God-given purpose, to, to, to live and lean into a bigger, better story. That I'm ready for that. I want to be reintroduced. I wonder if that's you today. And I just want you to know, I love this quote. I've used it before, but Max Lucado says, if there are 1,000 steps between you and God, If there are 1,000 steps between you and God, God will take 999 of them and leave the last step for you. And if you're ready to be reintroduced to God, what I want you to hear this morning is he's taken the 999 steps. We talked about that last week. He died on a cross. He had to choose between himself, saving himself and saving you and us, and he chose to save us. He's taken the 999 steps. Today he's saying, will you take the one step? And so let's just pause for a moment there. Let's take that Selah moment where we pause and ponder, where we stop and we say, God, what's stirring in me right now? How are you speaking to me right now? Do I need to be reintroduced to you today. Maybe that's you today. What's my next step from this first reflection? We're gonna send it to Brian and Casey to sing this wonderful song called My Defender. Father, would you reacquaint us, reintroduce us to your love, to who you are. Lord, help us to take that last step into your arms this morning. And Lord, that might even look like just sitting still in worship, just surrendering to who you are today, Lord. All we need to do is give you the praise, give you the worship, give you the honor and the glory. And Lord, you're so good and faithful to do the rest. So even when we feel lost, Lord, we surrender to you. and know that you're going to come find us. Oh, 
Let's jump into the second reflection this morning. Notice what you notice. Jesus had a hard conversation with Peter. Jesus chose to have a difficult conversation with Peter. That's my second reflection as I was digging into this passage. You realize again the context. Peter had denied him. I don't even know the man. Now, the humanity of Jesus, just sit in that. Sometimes we, we lose who Jesus was really. I mean, he was perfectly God, but he was also perfectly human. And I, I believe that the human side of Jesus was hurt, abandoned by one of his closest friends. It's like, really, Peter? I'm suffering. I'm being tortured. And you turn your back on me. And so now, after the crucifixion and the resurrection and Jesus appears, there's this kind of awkward moment I'm, I'm reading into the text. Like, we got to have a conversation. We, if we're going to move forward in a deep friendship and in mission together, Peter, I got I to gotta go there. We, I got to ask you, are you with me? Do you love me? And I just, I want to pause right now because as I read this story, I just sense that there are some of you that are avoiding that hard conversation, that difficult conversation, that conversation that needs repair. Uh, and, and maybe it's with a family member. Maybe it's, maybe it's with a business partner. Maybe it's with a neighbor. But let's just talk quarantine. Let's just talk home sheltering for a minute, can we? I mean, I'm thinking about the unspoken expectations that we all have around the house. I'm, I'm thinking about the unrealistic expectations we all have around the house together. The unmet expectations that we carry in our hearts. And then I'm thinking about just all that when you put people together, quarantine, tone of our voice in our conversations, we get, we get edgy. We get, we make, we got to have the last word. We can't let things go. Uh, we say something that's hurtful. Uh, what is it for you? I just wrote here in my notes. I put, what about the volume of the music in the house? Are the lights on? Are they dimmed? Are they off? What about the dishes in the sink again? The trash, the shoes off in the house. Hey, you left crumbs on the counter. Whatever it is, all of us, are having these, we're rubbing against each other and our feelings get hurt. And how do we deal with that? How do we deal with relationships that are important to us? Just like Jesus' relationship with Peter was very important to him. How are we dealing with our spouse, with our kids, with our extended family, with our roommates during this time? I wanna call you to have the conversation that you're avoiding that repair conversation, that maybe there's a broken relationship, a strained relationship, the silent treatment, the cold wars going on at home right now maybe. 
What is that relationship for you? You know, I was in a small group on Zoom this week and a close friend of mine said, we were talking about just sharing what's going on in our life. And, and he said, I have a strained relationship with my brother who lives in another state, but he goes, I, I need to pick up the phone and I need to initiate repair. I need to initiate uh, reconciliation. Now, as I'm talking right now, you're thinking, who, who's that person for you right now? that you need to initiate repair, that, that, that you need to take that step and initiate that olive branch. Maybe it's to say you're sorry, to ask for forgiveness. Maybe it's to say, hey, my feelings were hurt and I've been avoiding you. Jono, Pastor Jono said this week as we were looking at this passage, he asked the what if question. What if this conversation between Peter and Jesus did not ever happen? Wow. Reflect on that. Think about that. Soak in that. Jesus not having this conversation, Peter would have been left. Peter would have been left in shame and guilt in beating himself up, going, how did I let Jesus down again? And uh, the Jesus movement, think about it. It would have been ruptured. The friendship would have been strained. The leader that went on to lead the early church, Peter, would have been lost. And the ending would have been even more tragic. But Jesus shows us what God is like. He's all about restoration. Jesus is all about restoration and rebuilding broken and strained relationships. So, I want us to pause and ponder to take this moment And here's your question. Who do you need to initiate repair with today? Let's take a moment to close our eyes and reflect on that. Just wanna invite you as we sing the song to maybe put your hands out in an open posture, just allowing God to, to come and speak, come and change what he wants to change. Come and mold what he wants to mold. Come and move where he wants to move. And just as, an, as a kind of outward symbol of saying, Lord, I'm listening. Lord, I'm here for you to have your way in my heart, in my mind, in my life. My heart is an open space for you to come and have your way. space. 
Lord, I pray right now, right here, in our homes, in our cars, in our kitchens, in our yards, wherever we're watching this, Lord, whatever you've just done in our hearts, would you seal it? Would you mark it? Lord, would you prompt us to write it down? Lord, those things that you've whispered quiet, those things that you've nudged in our spirits, Lord, those, those places where you've turned up the volume, God, don't let us miss it. Would you mark it right now? In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks, I'm ready to have us jump right into the third reflection. Notice what you notice. This week as I was studying and soaking in this scripture, here's my third reflection. Notice Jesus' first question to Peter. Notice the first question he asked Peter. After they, they were separated, Peter denied him. Now Jesus shows up in this resurrection appearance what's the question that he asked Peter does he say how could you who raised you does he ask what's wrong with you no no what does he ask he says Peter do you love me do, do you love me more do, do you love me more than these and we're not certain, scholars aren't certain what the these are that he was referring to, but certainly had to do with either his friends, his fishing buddies, the lifestyle of fishing. He'd gone back to his old life. Maybe it was the fish, the nets, the money they were making. Do you love me more than these? The familiarity with it all, the comfort of the lifestyle he'd created. Peter, do you, do you love me more than these? And that word more, I want you to circle that in your Bible. That's a, that's a challenging word. Do you love me more than these? More than money, family, success, comfort. You know, Jesus in Luke's gospel, chapter 14, verse 26, if you have a moment, maybe flip there. This is what Jesus said. He said, you cannot be my disciple unless you love me more than you love your father and mother, your wife and children, and your brothers and sisters. You cannot come with me unless you love me more than you love your own life. You ready to get kicked in the teeth? I mean, some of you, you're going, I want to be challenged, Pastor John. Okay, read Luke 14, 26 again. Did you see that? You cannot be my disciple unless you love me more than these, your own life, your family, your kids. Wow, that is so tough. Here's my question that I was thinking about noodling on, chewing on. How do I know if I love something or someone more than? How do, how do I know that? Well, when I first became a Christian, I remember literally praying this prayer. Jesus, I want to follow you just as long as ice hockey's part of it. I was a hockey kid and played hockey so much. My close lifelong friend, Rusty, he was just in town this week and uh, spent the night with us. We had a great little reunion and we played hockey together every day. And, and then I became a Christian and I, and I remember literally praying, I'm not willing to follow you, Lord, unless hockey's part of it. What, what, what might that be for you today? As I'm speaking, there's something that you're holding on to. You're saying, I'm not letting go of that. If I got to follow Jesus, you're saying I got to let go. What is that for you? What, what, what is that, that divided heart? It's almost like two-timing God. You can't two-time him. You got to let go in order to have a deeper, stronger, higher loyalty to Jesus. That's what he's saying to Peter. If we're going to move forward, if you're going to live your bigger, better story, if you're going to let me transform your life, Peter, then I need to know, do you love me more than these? 
You know, I started thinking about where this love comes from. It comes from being stunned by the grace of God. It comes from being overwhelmed by the reality, by the truth that God has chosen you, that God has forgiven you, that God loves you, that God is, has and never will give up on you. When that love, when that grace overwhelms you and, and, and hits you, something changes inside of you. When you're loved and you know it and you feel it, it changes you. And here's what I wrote in my notes. It changes you so that you want to follow. You want to obey. You want to walk in his ways and on his path. John 14, verse 15, Jesus said, If you love me, then you'll do this other thing called keeping my commandments. Loving Jesus is so deep. It's so life-changing because we treasure him above all else. That's the growth path. And then because of that love, we do what he commands. We don't do what he commands in order to earn his love. We do what he commands. It's a responsive life, following his commands because we love him. Otherwise, it's a life of legalism and ought and do and obligation, and that doesn't last. That does not last, and there's no freedom in that. But here's what I want you to hear as I wrap up this message. When the love of God and the grace of God hits you, when you realize that on that cross, he chose to save you instead of himself. You know what happens? When that love hits you deep, it changes you. The taker becomes a giver. The bully becomes a, a kinder and gentler soul. The bitter person becomes a forgiving person. The self-absorbed person becomes a servant. The locked up becomes freed up. And so as I wrap up this message, I want to ask you this question. What's holding you back? What's holding you back from loving Jesus more than these? You got to fill in the these. What's holding you back? Jesus is asking you this morning, John, Mark, Sarah, Jennifer, do you love me more than these? Let's take a moment to pause, to ponder, a Selah moment. Let's close in prayer. Father, we're going to transition into a song, but before we do, I want you to know that I, I, I do love you. Not perfectly. I'm, I'm one of those three steps forward, two steps back, just like Peter. But just like Peter, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Yes, Lord, I know you know that I love you. And, and today I want to affirm my commitment to loving you and following you. And I pray for the person out there this morning that's watching, that's wavering, that's on the fence, that's, that's kind of just going through the motions of religion. And Lord, my prayer is that today, that, that the love and grace of Jesus Christ would hit them, would overwhelm them, would ambush them. And it's real, this grace, this forgiveness, this love, it's so real. And may that love find a way into our hearts and transform us forever. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have it all. Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now yours There is no greater call than
Hey, let's pray together. God, we want to build our lives on you, on your love. You are a firm foundation. You are our rock. You are our fortress. God, in this time of crisis, we need your help. We need your strength to build our life on your love. So would you open our heart to your love more and more this week? God, open our eyes to see those around us who need your love. Thank you so much for being with us, for speaking to us in this time. We know you're working. Even though we can't feel it, we can't see it all the time, God, we know that you are always working. So we thank you and we praise you and we, we just worship you today. In your name, Jesus, amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you sense God speaking to your heart and your mind. If you feel led to begin a relationship, begin a friendship with Jesus, we would love to pray for you and to encourage you and walk alongside you. So you could just, you could hit that button down there online and, and jump in a prayer chat with us. If you want to know more about Ocean Hills, you want to know what, what's being offered right now, how you can get more connected, there's a connection card on your screen. You could fill that out for us. And lastly, if you want to support our ministry, uh, we, we would love that. Uh, we're trying to serve this community and this world right now. And so you can give through text or online and you can see the button there on your screen too. You can text Ocean Hills to 77977. We also have a compassion fund that we're building right now, the Galatians 6-9 fund, we're calling it G6-9 fund. And we would, uh, we would love to help people who are struggling to buy groceries or to pay for their rent. So if you wanna be a part of that fund and donate to that, you can do that as well on our, on our Give site. Hope you have a great day. We look forward to seeing you again soon and connecting with you this week. Take care. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. He's better than you think. Unless you love me more than you love your father and mother. <laughs> I can't do it. I could have just actually. <laughs> that's real life. I should have said, well, that's.